early action, early decision. What does that mean? Rolling admissions. Should you be thinking about that? I thought you just submitted your applications to law school. Let's talk about it. For those of you who are new, my name is Sydney Montgomery and I am the founder here at Barrier Breakers where we specialize in working with first generation and minority law school applicants. And today we are talking about myths about early action, early decision, and the rolling admissions timeline. First off, let's talk about what these terms mean. Early action, early decision, and rolling. So first off, most law schools are on a rolling admissions cycle. What does that mean? That means that they read applications as they come in and they make decisions on a continual basis. Now, it does not mean that they make decisions in the order that the applications come in, which is definitely a misconception. People are like, well, I submitted in September. She submitted in October. She heard before me. I don't understand. Applications are still made. Decisions are still made on a holistic and comparative basis. So sometimes while the application is read in the order that it's received, they might say, you know, this is this is a good applicant, but I just want to see what the rest of the application cycle looks like. I want to see who else we get in the next couple of months and compare this applicant to the, some of the other applicants that I get in the next couple of months and then make my decision, right? So rolling admission does not mean you receive your application decision based on when you submitted, but it does mean that your application is read in the order that it's submitted, generally speaking. So if you are a really, really top candidate, and you submit really early, it's possible, not guarantee, not at all, but it's possible you might find out. And that could be you might find out in a week, in two weeks, in two months, right? But they do fill their spots as they go. That is important, right? Decisions are being made on a continual basis. So there are less spots available in February than there are in October, which is why we encourage all students to apply in the fall, ideally before Christmas, but definitely in the fall so that you are taking advantage of applying when there are more available spots because just the way that things work when there are less available spots, it's just that much harder to convince them that you should be the one that takes that available spot. Now, there are also advantages if you are not a super strong candidate, right? And which is okay, like on numbers, right? You have other things going for you. You've got work experience, you have phenomenal essays because you've been following our podcast and YouTube, or you have a fee waiver. And so you've gotten our Master Your Personal and Diversity Statement course for free, because yes, if you have a fee waiver, that course is free. And so you've used that free course to get your life together. And now your essays are bomb, but your GPA and your LSAT score are maybe not super high. And so you're not a strong, candidate on your numbers, on your hard numbers, you might still want to apply early. Actually, you definitely not might, you absolutely should apply early in the cycle because every school takes students below the medians, every single school, right? A median is the number in the middle. So by definition, there are students below that in order to have the number in the middle, but they might only have a certain number of spots that they're giving to students below their medians. And there might be that in December, January, February, they've kind of given all of those spots away. Now, the other thing with rolling admissions is that scholarships are sometimes at some schools on a rolling basis. So also by February, they literally might not have any scholarship money left. This is not every school, but there are definitely some schools that operate like this. That's kind of what rolling admissions generally means. What is early action, early decision? And how does that layer on top of it? Well, early action means that you're applying by a set date, which it's very interesting in the law school world because we have early action layering on top of rolling admissions. You have to tell them that you're applying early action. Like you, it's not just like I submitted it early and you are going to receive your decision by a certain date. So that's one of the differences in a general rolling admissions school that does not have early action, early decision, all that good stuff. You could apply in October and find out in May. It's possible. Honestly, this application cycle that we're coming into is going to be a little slower. So that's probably going to be not as abnormal as it would be in the past. However, with early action, it's like, no, I'm applying by X date and I will find out by Y date. And you know, there's just something lovely about that. Usually the early action deadline is November 1 or November 15. Schools differ on whether they will accept the November LSAT as 
part of, you know, if you're applying early action. So you do have to be a bit prepared. What are the benefits of applying early action? One, it signals to the schools, again, that you're prepared, right? That you've, you've got your ducks in a row. And also that this is a school that you really care about. So a lot of schools don't have these like YS essays or those sort of things, but making the decision to say, you know, I want to definitively apply early action to your school says, I really like your school. This is a school I really want to go to. It shows that demonstrated interest, which is never a bad thing. But if you have to make the decision between rushing and making a sloppy application just to get it in by November 1, or making a better application and getting it in on November 23rd, not early action, I would choose November 23rd. You want to apply with your strongest application. You don't want to rush an application just because you want to get it by the early action deadline. Now, what is early decision? Early decision is binding. Early action is not binding. You apply early decision and there is no thanks, but no thanks. There's thanks and I'm coming because I applied early decision and it is a binding decision. So this is really when we get into these questions. Now, early decision generally has the same dates, November 1, November 15th, and now there's like ED2, early decision 2, which is in January. There are a lot of thoughts that I have about early decision 2, all of which are not for this video. But this early decision framework is really where we get a lot of questions from students that may start to ask things like, will early decision considerably help my chances of getting into law school? Especially if I'm a student with lower test scores or lower LSAT scores, how much will early decision help my chances of getting into this particular law school? Will early decision help my chances of getting a scholarship or will it hurt my chances of getting a scholarship? And generally just speaking, is early decision worth it? This question of will early decision help your law school application? It really is an it depends, which is such a lawyer answer. But the thing is that there are some schools that really do take it to heart when you apply early decision. Again, it's that demonstrated interest, but it's also the fact that you are coming and you are coming without seeing your financial aid package or your merit scholarships if you even receive any. And so here's the thing, like in order to apply early decision, you really have to know like this is the school for me. Like it does not matter what else happens. You have to know, like I want to go to Sydney Montgomery's law school more than anything in the world. I will go there if I receive no money. I don't care if Harvard calls me. I don't care if Yale, Georgetown, Stanford. I don't care if I get five full ride offers. This is the school that I want to go to, Sydney Montgomery's law school. I'm applying early decision and I feel really good about it. If you cannot say that, it is not a good idea for you to apply early decision. That being said, again, there are schools where if you are a student that has a lower GPA or a lower LSAT score, it can help. It can help your applications to apply early decision. But do you know what does not help? Rushing a sloppy application to apply early decision. They will just deny you faster, right? You're just rushing yourself into a denial. So you still want to have a strong application. You must have a strong application and you must control the parts of your application that you can control, your writing, your letters of recommendation. And here's that timing piece that we talk about. Everything is strong and you're feeling really good about it. There are some schools where yes, you will end up maybe getting a little bit of an admissions bump for applying early decision. Now, there are schools that you're not really going to get that much of a bump, but there are definitely some schools where it will help you to apply early decision. But the thing is, you know, people then ask these questions about, well, if I apply early decision, what does that do with my scholarship? And so I wanna debunk some myths for you. The first is that applying early decision always means that you're not going to get scholarship money. That's not true. There are a lot of schools that have full ride scholarships tied to some early decision programs. UCLA has one, GW has one. There are a number of schools that have these and it's a part and parcel, right? I'm applying early decision to this full ride scholarship program. So like the money is not an issue anymore. You've got the full ride. You still need to know, it doesn't matter who else calls, this is the school I wanna go to. Because getting out of an early decision contract is, you don't you don't wanna do that. It's just, it's a little messy, it's a little messy. We could talk about that in another video as well. Like what happens if I apply early decision and gosh, I just really don't wanna go there anymore. We wanna try to avoid that situation by all costs, but we'll talk about what happens if you need to do that. But those full ride scholarships kind of take some of that financial stress out because traditionally, historically, it's only students that have means, right? Who are comfortable paying full freight for law school and no one should really pay full freight for law school. But students that, you know, money is not a concern that were able to do early decision and those students who needed to negotiate their scholarships or see what financial aid or loans or ma minimize their loans, like, you know, they were disadvantaged sometimes because they weren't able to apply 
early decision because they really did need the financial aid consideration. However, with these full ride scholarship programs that are tied to early decision, that part is not as big of a deal. Now, on the flip side, there are a number of early decision programs that don't come with scholarships. And in those cases, you may still receive the same scholarship offer that you would have, but scholarships are really used to entice strong students. And if you're applying early decision, they don't need to entice you. You can't make another decision. That's where you're going. So there are some schools where if you apply early decision, you may, may, you may get less scholarship money than you might have but also you might get into the school when you might not have, right? And the reality is, I just told you, schools use scholarship money to entice strong students. If you are below the LSAT and below the GPA median and you're applying early decision to a school, likelihood of you getting scholarship money from that school was already low because you are not necessarily the student that they are going to be throwing scholarship dollars at to entice them away from other offers. There are exceptions to this rule. This is just some generalities. So these are some things to consider, but it's almost never worth paying full freight for law school when you have other options. I will say that, you know, there are a lot of schools, especially in the top 10 that don't do merit scholarships at all. They only do need base scholarships. So if you're a student that has no need, you might have been in that situation anyways. There's a lot of reasons for this, but you know, hopefully the earning potential is much higher right? Or you're going into public service and they have really great loan repayment assistance programs. So there are things that mitigate the finances that way. But so there's some things to consider and you really want to consider all these options. It's not a blanket. Do I apply early decision? Do I get these scholarships? It's like, let me look at this school. Is this particular school a school I want to apply early decision to? Is this particular school a school where the finances make sense for me to apply early decision? It can be your favorite school in the world. You can say, Sydney, yes, this is everything, but the finances might not make sense for you to apply early decision to that school. So it's a two-part question. Is this the school that like, this is it for me? It's everything I've wanted in life and the finances make sense for me to apply early decision. I should also note, not every school has early action or early decision. So the school that is like absolutely right for you, they might just have rolling admissions and then you just apply rolling admissions and that's fine. Really, I guess step one is, what are the ways that I can apply to this school? Then step two, do I want to apply early action or early decision to this school? Step three, does it financially make sense for me to apply early decision if I've chosen to do that to this school? There's some options there. And ultimately, right, maybe this is a pre-step one, am I ready to apply right now? Is my application strong? Do I have the LSAT score or the GRE score that I'm happy with? Have I taken the time with my essays? Have I written the supplemental essays? Have I prepared my recommenders? Have I done everything that I want to do and to make sure that I am the strongest law school applicant before even considering these options? And that's really important. As I mentioned, we are a nonprofit. We have a lot of resources for you that we can help you with. It's some for free. If you have an LSAC fee waiver, we would love to be able to give you our master your personal statement and diversity statement course for free because that's what we do here. We have options, lower cost options as well for essay editing. We have one-on-one -on -one counseling still for this cycle. You can submit questions to us at bit.ly slash break into law school. I answer them about once a month. We'd love to hear from you. Write us, send us a note, make sure that you are are staying up to date with admissions so that you can make your application the strongest that it can be. If you have questions, like I said, please submit them to bit.ly slash break into law school. Leave us a comment. What other questions do you have about early action, early decision, application timeline? Make sure that you are liking, subscribing, rating, and reviewing. Share this with a friend. Sharing is caring. And we will see you very soon.